Hi there, I'm Liz. I am the owner and sole employee behind Craft Kitsune. If you're new to this channel, Craft Kitsune is a monthly subscription box for crafting and each month features a different theme and I curate each of the themes and then lately as of, it's been over a year now, I do exclusive molds that I design myself in-house so I do everything from the design all from scratch to the prototyping using a 3D resin printer um, that my dad and I share. So I also do everything else behind Craft Kitsune with a few exceptions that I'll go into in just a second. So I answer all customer service emails. So if you're talking to someone from Craft Kitsune, it is me. <laughs> I curate the boxes. I, um, yeah, I do everything pretty much. <laughs> The exceptions of things that I outsource to other people would be occasional photographs. I have a professional photographer take photos of a box and then my sibling also does all the illustrations for me. So all of the artwork on the flyers, some artwork on social media posts and stuff like that. And then the last thing is something exciting and new for this month. And that is I finally have a fulfillment center. So it's not my own fulfillment center or my own warehouse. I'm contracting a fulfillment center to do all the packing for me. That is really nice for me because it, I will get a lot of time back that I can put into other things like making content for you guys, um, doing more subscriber um, feedback and surveys, maybe more contests for subscribers, that sort of thing. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of improvements to Craft Kitsune coming up very soon. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that and I guess one last thing is that I just want to thank you guys for your support um, over the years now. <laughs> um, some of you have been with me since the beginning, some of you are new subscribers, some of you are just watching this video and learning about my business for the first time. So in any case, I thank you guys very much for your support and <laughs> I'm really looking forward to coming up with more designs and bringing you more craft kits. And so with that, let's get into the August kit. So first I'll go over all the supplies in the kit very briefly and then we will jump into the tutorial portion of the video. So first up we have the insert which goes over some instructions as well as has the supply list. Next we have this silicon mold. It is a cylinder mold. Then we have our main medium which is UV resin. And then we have some glow pigment, which you can use to dye the UV resin. Next, we have a set of six pastel pigments, and they come with applicators as well. Next, we have this mold exclusive to Craft Kitsune, designed by me, with nine different coral reef inhabitant designs. And then lastly, we have some sand. Alright, so now we'll jump into the tutorial. First, I'll show you how to make the coral reef inhabitants, so all the little animals. And then we will jump into the suggested project of the month. Here's an example of each of the designs on the exclusive mold. So there's a brain coral, a tubular or tube style coral, a branch coral, a dumbo octopus, a sea turtle, and this one is more of a baby sea turtle in terms of size. A starfish. A larger fish I like to make into surgeon fish. A smaller fish I like to make into clownfish. And then lastly, a seahorse. The suggested project is to make a cylinder coral reef environment slash aquarium that glows in the dark if you want, <laughs> up to you. And then I'll also show you at the end of the video some other examples and suggestions for other projects I made, but of course use your own creativity to bring your ideas to life. And this kit did sell out before the end of the month, meaning there are no leftover kits for purchase. However, you can buy the exclusive mold on its own if you wanna get in on the coral reef making fun. So here I've laid out all the supplies I'll need. Most supplies are from the kit and then I also have a silicon mat and a silicon mixing cup as well as a UV lamp. So you'll need a UV lamp to cure the UV resin. I don't include the UV lamp in the monthly kits to avoid giving the lamp again and again but I do have a starter kit with the UV lamp as well as a bunch of other supplies 
listed on the website. So here I actually already have some UV resin in my silicon cup. So I'll be adding just a bit of white alcohol ink as well as pink alcohol ink. So I add just a little bit of each because if you add too much, it can inhibit the curing process of UV resin as well as two-part resin. It can come out squishy or it won't harden all the way. So just be cautious when adding any inks or pigments to your resin and you can always add a little bit more if you need to. So after mixing in the alcohol ink completely with the silicone tool, I'm going to be adding some of the pigment that came in the kit. These are mica pigments, so they have a little bit of a shimmer or metallic-y look to them. So you can either mix them in directly to, to your resin, or you can use a tool to dab them into the mold directly. So here I'm using the applicator that came with the kit. You can also use a paintbrush to do this as well. So I'm just taking some of the pigment and dusting it into the mold. So now I'm going to be pouring my UV resin into the mold and I do want to make one note that I actually did not do here but I found later was useful. So the Dumbo Octopus and Brain Coral designs are a bit thicker than the others. So you'll actually want to cure these in two layers especially if you're using an opaque UV resin. So you want to pour both cavities about halfway full cure it and then using the same resin fill the other half and cure it again and then of course if you have your resin in a cup like mine where it's sitting out you want to make sure it's away from the uv light just so it doesn't cure while you're curing that initial layer and completely solidify in the cup before you pour the second layer it actually turned out all right with this particular uv resin to cure it in one layer however here is another pour that I did where the Dumbo Octopus did not cure properly because I did it all in one layer and that's when I learned that I should probably split it into two. Alright so now to cure or harden your UV resin you'll want to use a UV lamp and I do this for two minutes on this relatively clear UV resin. You'll want to do it more like three to five minutes if you're using opaque UV resin. So now all the pieces are ready to come out of the mold and they pop out pretty easily. And these are all the pink ones that I made, so I used that pink pigment. And then here are a couple that I used the blue pigment on. You can also use the pigment and dust it onto your cured or hardened pieces. You'll just want to make sure to seal your piece, especially before you put it into a larger resin project like we're going to do later in this video. So you want to seal in that pigment. Here I'm using the sealant that came in the July 2021 kit. Alright, so now we're going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to be showing you this cool glow pigment. So I had a lot of fun experimenting with this supply. So here I just mixed in completely clear UV resin with just the pigment itself and then you can see the effect. So the glow pigment is a jade white color and it's this somewhat translucent white color. It has this luminescence to it that I think lends itself well to coral reef creatures. And then of course it also glows in the dark. And you can change both the appearance of your piece in the daylight as well as the glow color by adding alcohol ink or other kinds of resin inks. So here I am making a pink color and then I also played around with adding mica pigments to it as well. So here's an example of each of the techniques using the Dumbo Octopus. So first we have one that's just the glow pigment, then one that is the glow pigment plus the mica powder. And then here is one with the mica pigment, the glow pigment, and alcohol ink. Here are all three next to each other. And then you can supercharge the glow effect by using a UV light over them for a brief period of time. And then here is the glow effect of each. So yeah, super fun supply. I'll be showing you a complete glow-in-the-dark aquarium a bit later in this video. Here are a bunch of the jade white glow pigment only pieces in action. And then here are a mix of those jade white pieces and then a few pieces that have the pink alcohol ink. One last thing I want to go over before we start assembling our aquariums is how you can add details to your coral reef creatures. 
Here are just a few things I like to do. I'm sure you'll find your own way of doing things. So I like to add stripes to make the small fish into clownfish and then the larger fish into a surgeon fish. So I also like to paint in the ridges on the brain coral. So I am just painting the entire thing with a white acrylic paint. And then you can go in with a cloth to rub most of the paint off, but it will actually leave the paint that's in the ridges. And then if it needs any touch-ups, I'll go in with a needle tool or a dotting tool. I also like to paint the ridges or the engraving on the turtle shell. So here I have a Posca paint marker, but you can also use a needle tool or a dotting tool as well. I also like to add a little face to the octopus. Alright, so now it's time to assemble our aquarium. I'm actually going to be using two-part resin for this, and I'm going to be doing it in two layers and two resin pores. This first layer is going to be very thin at the bottom of our cylinder mold. So for my particular resin, I am measuring equal parts of A and B by volume, not weight, and then I'm going to mix them for two minutes. And now I'm going to be adding some sand to my resin because I'm going to be making the sand bottom of the ocean or my aquarium. I like to add a lot of sand to the resin to where it becomes kind of chunky, goopy. <laughs> so then I add this to the bottom of my mold, making sure that it hits the bottom of the mold and not the sides just because I don't want the sand on the sides. I just want it on the bottom of the mold in a thin layer. And then I'll let this sit for 24 hours before moving on to the next step. And this is my favorite part. So here I am deciding which of my creatures that I've made. I have a lot, as you can see. Uh, which of them I'm going to combine together into which aquarium. And then once I decide, I super glue a lot of the bigger pieces to the bottom onto the sand. And then I glue some of the smaller pieces like the fish and the seahorse to the bigger corals. The seahorse actually hooks nicely onto the branch coral, but I also add a little bit of super glue just to make it extra secure. Once everything is glued in the position you want and the glue has completely dried, you can go ahead and pour your resin. So here I have some resin. I tinted a light blue color with some alcohol ink. And then you'll wait about 24 hours, depending on your resin, for this to harden and it is ready to unmold or take out of the mold. Alright, so now let's look at the finished projects as well as some other suggested projects you can make using this kit. So first are some aquariums. So here's some that I made using different molds that I had as well as the one from the kit. And then this one is actually glow in the dark. So here's what it looks like, all assembled, the glow-in-the-dark effect. I also made a couple shakers using pieces from the mold as inserts. I also used the mold to make some foam grips, so this one glows in the dark. And then this one has a sand base. Here is a book box I made using the exclusive book box mold. I also made some jewelry, so here I have a necklace with a sand base and then a clownfish and a starfish. And then lastly, I have this little keychain that has a bunch of octopus. And then one last thing before I go is the next kit, so the September kit. The theme is witchy. And the kit will include this exclusive mold to make miniature cauldrons. And then you can also add on the mold to make the larger version as well. The design is a revamp from last year's cauldron mold. Just like all exclusive molds, all designs are done by me from scratch. And they are edited and modified according to subscriber feedback. The kit will also include lots of other Halloween slash spooky craft supplies, so I hope you're looking forward to it. To become a subscriber, if you're not already, you can go to the website, which will be linked in the description. Alright, so that's it for this video. Again, thank you guys so much for your support, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!